off and the clock has started. Showtime, everybody. Welcome to an all new Downright Sports, the show for the sports fan from the sports critic. And I'm your host, Brent Reed. And we are back. I haven't been around for a long time, guys. So a lot has happened since I've walked away. And it's, it's, you know, so I hope everybody out there is being safe. Hope you're being cautious, staying indoors. I'm quarantined. So all I'm going to do is give you content, content, content. You can check out the, the, the podcast. Downright Sports Radio at Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Listen to that. Take your mind off the world. Listen to the rants of a madman. That's who I am. Today's show, we're going to talk about the NBA Hall of Fame selection for the 2020 year. Uh, the guys that's one of those are who's who. We're each one man that's the, the key, the, the stars of the Hall of Fame this year. And we'll have their own segment. But we're going to start it with the guys who are in and those other people, the, the supporting cast, if you will. And it's a nice little group of guys. So we start with former college basketball co- coach, legendary basketball coach, career that went from the late 60s to the 2000s, the mid the late 2000s, if you will. Eddie Sutton, his best years was with Arkansas and Oklahoma State. He went to the Final Four twice with Oklahoma State, once he went with Arkansas. He had a record of 806 wins to 326 losses. One of the few coaches that has over 800 career wins. Never won a championship, but he has won Coach of the Year twice. So, the, you can see on the bottom here his credentials and the list of teams he's also been with. I'm not going to go and touch on all that. You guys can read out there, right? Unless, of course, you're listening and just have it on this background noise, which I'll tell you. Thank you. And subscribe. Become a friend. Also, we move on to another coach. Uh, Rudy Tomdanovich, who used to coach the Houston Rockets, but believe it or not, for those of you that didn't know, Rudy was actually a basketball player in the NBA himself. Rudy played um, from 1971 to 1981 with the Houston Rockets, said team he coached for. Rudy was a five-time All-Star. Um, as a head coach, he was he coached from 92 to 2003, 2004 where he would help the Houston Rockets win two NBA championships. And he also won a gold medal in 2000 when he led Team USA Basketball to gold in Sydney, I want to say that was. Yes, Sydney. Put it on the board. It was Sydney. How about that? And then moving on to Tamika Catchings. Tamika Catchings may be one of the best. She's definitely in the top 10 category of all-time WNBA players. Why do you say? I'll tell you why I say. 14 years, 16 points a game, 10 time All Star, 4 gold medals, 3rd overall pick, rookie of the year, 7 times steals leader, 5 time defensive player, and she's the all time playoff leader in rebounds. She played for Indiana her entire career, and she even has a championship out of it. She clearly knows what it takes to win, but as far as the face of Mount Rushmore, the conversation can start with her. And there will be a show where I will touch on that. How about that? Um, next year, there's going to be a 2021 20, Basketball Hall of Fame. And the list of people that, is, that are coming up is a pretty good list of who's who. Um, you're looking at Paul, Paul Pierce, Chris Paul, Chris Webber, Sean Marion, Ben Wallace, Chauncey Billups, Tim Hardaway, Amari Stoudemire, and Stephon Marbury. I took the liberty to tell you who I think is in and who is not. Paul Pierce, check. Champion, face of the Boston Celtics, played there almost his entire career, but basically could have chose to leave when the team was in his worst years and chose to stay. They rebuilt the team and he got a championship and he became the MVP of that. But Paul was the man on his team for many years. People forget all the Eastern Conference Championship games he took them when it was just him and Antoine Walker running things. 
Chris Bosh, no. Bosh is a two-time champion, but he was not the centerpiece of said teams. He was more of a complimentary piece. His career came short due to heart issues. When he did in Toronto, he had some good years, but I don't think it's enough to put him in the hole. He didn't have, I don't feel like his, there's enough of his career where I can go on the five Hall of Fame. The only way reason why he gets in is because he's, he, he played side by side with D-Wing and LeBron. If that's the case, then half of the Cavaliers LeBron ever played with should be in the Hall of Fame. Chris Webber, absolutely. What he did in Michigan, what he did in Sacramento, he was a difference maker. If Chris Webber played in today's NBA, he could be the best player we've ever seen. He was the new style of hybrid big man who can handle it, take the jumper. It was insane, but I think you have to put Chris Webber in. I think it's a shame he's not in already. Sean Marion, definitely not. Ben Wallace, hmm, hmm. It's tough, because earlier on my show I said, um, you can't put in Dennis Rodman. I'm not sure you put in Ben Wallace. I have it as a yes, but Ben is not a great basketball player, but not a Hall of Famer. Uh, Chauncey Billups, no. Tim Hardaway, maybe. Morris Dottomai, no. Stephon Marbury, you could put him in on what he did in China alone. His, because the, again, the, the, the Basketball Hall of Fame is not the NBA Hall of Fame. It's the Naismith Hall of Fame for international women and everything. So I think you could put Marbury in based on what he did in China, not what he did in the NBA. When they, what he did in the NBA was have a big fart. What he did in China was just win. Win, better win. So I think you put him in for that. And that's what I think. And then we'll find out next year what everybody else thinks. I can care less what you think. Anyway, when we come back, we're going to go into segment number two where we're going to touch on, uh, we're going to kick off with Kevin Durant, I mean Kevin Garnett, as he is not going into the Hall of Fame, and you'll see the kind of order I did it in. And we're going to have some fun with that. Downright Sports. All right, check it out. So we kick it off with Kevin Garnett, the big ticket. One of the best uh, three-way players we've ever seen. When Garnett was drafted, we forget Garnett was a small forward. He became a power forward, and became a center later in his career. Kevin Garnett has achievements that would make the most average mama happy. How about that? If you look at what the man has done, he's a former league MVP, a uh, multiple-time All-Star. In fact, he made the All-Star team 15 times. He is a um, All-Star MVP, NBA champion with the Boston Celtics, All-Defensive player in 2008. He made the All-NBA team nine times, All-Defensive team 12 times. Why is that important? Because Kevin, Durant, Kevin Garnett, Everybody always associates him early in his career with scoring, but they forget how great of a defensive player this guy was and how much he loved to play defense, blocking your shot, guarding you man to man, shutting you down and talking trash. No one next to Michael Jordan talks as much trash as KG. He talks so much trash, he talks to himself. That's how much trash this man talks. KG, his draft class was a very, very interesting one if you look at it. KG, when he was drafted, did not go in the top one, two, or three. Joe Smith, one. Uh, Antonio McDice, two. Jerry Stackhouse, Jerry Stack, three. Rasheed Wallace, four. And then it was KG. I bet you all those teams wish they could get those picks back now. Um, looking at what the guy has done in his career, it's unfortunate in Minnesota he couldn't get it done based on the type of team he had. 2004 was maybe the best year they had when they had uh, with Charles Brewell, Sam Cassell. Don't forget, before that, he had Stephon Marbury, and the two of them just couldn't make it work. But to be fair, nobody can make it work with Stephon Marbury. Moving on, KG finally would move on to Boston, but little side note, know this, he almost ended up in LA with Kobe. Can you have imagined Kobe Bryant and Kevin Garnett? Oh my God. The, 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 oh, I would have given them multiple titles. When he got to Boston, it was towards the tail end of some of those guys' careers. Paul Pierce, Ray Allen, KG. Not to mention, they had an opportunity. Injuries stopped them from winning multiple championships. Whether it was KG the follow, and then Kendrick Perkins would get hurt when they played the, 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 the Lakers for the second time, and they went to seven games, and the Celtics was actually up. And then KP got hurt, and then the Celtics didn't have any big men to stop Paul Gasol. And Andrew Bynum. What was that? What's his name? Andrew Bynum? I think. He can't even be a boss anyway. But in any case, Kevin Garnett 
is without a doubt one of the best of all time. I said it about Chris Webber in the last segment, but if you put Kevin Gar Kevin Garnett in today's NBA, he may be the best player in the league, period, because he was able to do it. He could dribble, he could shoot, he could play defense, something guys don't want to do. And what makes these three Hall of Famers currently right now unique, Kevin, Gar Kevin Durant, Kevin Garnett, excuse me, God, I hate these things. Kevin Durr, Kevin Garnett, Tim Duncan, and Kobe Brown, what makes them so unique is the fact that you put those guys on anybody's team and the team instantly goes up by 20, 10 to 20 wins overnight because those guys were prime time. Those guys, ladies and gentlemen, have the stamp approval of being showtime, and that's what they are, and that's what Kevin, that's what KG, the big ticket, definitely was. Uh, did I miss anything in my notes? Don't think so. Anyway, when we come back, we're going to move on. Oh, funny enough, if you're paying attention, the way I'm doing the order was the way these guys were drafted. KG went in uh, 5, Kobe 6, and then Tim Duncan in 97. And we're going to Kobe right now when we come back. Sports. There are some players in the league history, you just have to say the name, Kobe. Kobe Bryant, without a doubt, is one of the top 10 greatest basketball players of all time. Some of them tend to wonder, what if Kobe could have won just two more championships? Is the conversation a lot different? Clearly, what puts Kobe, to me, in a different conversation than some other guys, Kobe was the man on his team. And Kobe wanted to be the man on his team. When they, you look for an MVP, it was Kobe Bryant and nobody else. Kobe is a former league MVP. Um, only once, though, which is kind of shocking to me. Because some of the years he spent in the wilderness, I felt he gave him a little love. But Kobe did run people the wrong way. It was for a long time. Kobe was in love. Let's not pretend like every year we all worshipped Kobe Bryant. Kobe might have been one of the most hated players because people knew, A, he wanted to be Michael. B, the rivalry between him and Shaq. And C, Kobe wanted to take your team's heart, eat it, and just poop it out on the floor. Because that's what Kobe Bean Bryant was. The man is an 18-time All-Star, five-time champion, two-time scoring leader, dunk contest champion, four-time All-Star MVP, two-times Finals MVP, and he's a 12-time All-Defensive player. Pay attention to that. Kobe Bryant is a 12-time All-Defense. People will just assume Kobe was jacking up shots, but the guy can shut you down and he can play defense. Kobe wanted to play the best player. If you pay attention, go back to the All-Star game, Jordan's last All-Star game. This was Jordan's swan song. Give Mike the ball and let him hit the shot. Kobe said, nah, old man, hike up the shorts and let's go to work. And that's Kobe's mentality. That's the black mama mentality. We all know Kobe that did this because he wanted to take what was yours. But at the end of the day, Kobe Bryant, there was two Kobe's. There was young Kobe, number eight, and there was number 24 Kobe that realized he couldn't do it on his own. And then the team would have to get a guy like Paul Gasol, Lamar Odom, Metal World Peace to help him win two more championships, which is, hey, at the end of the day, can't beat it. He went to three finals with those guys and won two. Most people would take it. It's better eyes on LeBron's eight and only three. But we look back now, and with Kobe Bryant just passing away earlier this year, we really take a look at his on-the-court legacy and where does he compare to the greats. Is he a 1A or is he 1B? We all can agree Jordan, Magic, LeBron, 1A. Is Kobe 1B? Why do you ask? Well, because you look at Jordan, you look at Magic. Well, let's take Magic out. You look at Jordan, you look at LeBron. Their teams needed them to win. When Kobe won his first three championships, clearly Shaquille O'Neal was the man on those teams. But Shaq will tell you he needed Kobe just as much as Kobe needed Shaq. That's why the come maybe Kobe's in a different conversation. Kobe's in a world of his own, which he always wanted to be. Everybody was looking for Jordan's replacement, whether it was Vince Carter, Ray Allen, Tracy McGrady, Grant Hill, but they didn't have to look far. The kid who got drafted drafted 14th. Look who was drafted ahead of Kobe Bryant. Marcus Camby, Stephon Marbury, Ray Allen, all was drafted ahead of him. Kobe went 13th in that draft, and nobody thought, hey, that's the heir apparent to MJ, and Kobe made it where everything MJ did, I can do. The game was so good. Kobe is so great. Will Chamberlain is the only man to score 100. 
Kobe's the only player to score 81. Hell, he's the only player to score 80. Nobody has come close since Kobe has done it. Not to mention his countless, countless, countless times scoring 40, scoring 50, scoring 60. Even in the last game of his career, he dropped 60 points. And a season he was in barely averaging 14. And he said, got one more left in the chamber for you. That's why I think you don't put Kobe in the same conversations. Kobe, I think there's Michael, and now I think you should start comparing people to Kobe. Who plays like Mike? Who plays like Kobe? That's what I think you should start looking into and just fill in the gaps. Anyway, when we come back, we're going to finish the show up, talk a little Tim Duncan, my favorite basketball player, the big fundamentals, Dowry Sports. <clears throat> Thank you all for watching as we finish up here the All-Star uh, special show. I mean, no, goodness gracious. Thank you all for watching as we finish up the Hall of Fame show. And we're going to top it off with my favorite player, drafted in 1997, the big fundamentals, Tim Duncan. Why did I love Tim Duncan so much? Because he showed you didn't have to be the high flyer. He showed you didn't have to be the flashy ball handler. He showed you didn't have to be a trash talker. He showed just play the game. The big fundamentals, nicknamed him by Shaquille O'Neal, is fits him perfectly. The guy did everything by the book. If you were designing how to play basketball from the power forward or center position, Tim Duncan would be your role model. Whether it's hitting the backboard shot, whether it's rebounding, whether it's boxing out, whether it's learning how to move the ball down the court in the transition, Tim Duncan did it better than anyone. Kevin McHale may be close, or even Moses Malone, but I'm not sure there's been a better player than Tim Duncan. The conversation with him makes people crazy because they're like, well, was he a center or was he a power forward? Well, funny enough, when he was drafted, he was a power forward because uh, David Robinson, a fellow Hall of Famer, was the center. But later in Timmy's career, the league evolved, so did Tim. Tim had count Tim's achievements. Oh boy, you gotta count them. Two-time, back-to-back, as we used to say in high school, uh, MVP. He is a three-time finals MVP, five-time NBA champion, 15-time uh, All-Star, 15-time all defensive player. The one, and he was also rookie of the year when he was drafted. These three Hall, uh, Hall of Famers, Kobe, KG, Tim Duncan, what they all have in common that a lot of players today don't, these guys loved playing defense as much as offense. The phrase is playing both sides of the ball, and that's what these guys did better than anybody. Kev, Tim Duncan had some great battles, by the way. Whether it was the battle against LA, whether it was against the Detroit Pistons final in 05, which is one of my favorites to this day. Whether it was the battle against Dallas Mavericks, him versus the Mavericks. Oh my God, because you had Dirk Nowinski, who was another power forward, but Dirk Nowinski was complete opposite. Dirk Nowinski get the ball, shoot a three. Dirk Nowinski hit you with that fadeaway, and then it was Tim Duncan. Smooth operator. Ugh. Jaying you and hitting you, like uh, hitting shots, and you just going wild. That just happened. Then he would have battles. It's crazy because he had battles with the two guys that's going in the hall with him Kobe and KG. And guess what? He beat both of them just like they beat him. Uh, Shaquille O'Neal, Karl Malone in his early careers. The funny thing you got to ask yourself is what would have happened if he chose, when he became a free agent, to go play in Orlando? Where would this have all been? Because at the time, Orlando had just got Grant Hill, and then we know they also would get Tracy McGrady. It was a possibility Tim Duck was going to join those boys. But chose to stay in San Antonio, where he played his entire career. If you take a look, um, basically what else he stood up, what else uh, represents him and his teams, international. Tim Duncan and those Spurs were some of the first international basketball players to achieve success at the highest level. At that point, an international player was kind of like a role player or a spot-up shooter. He gave Tony Parker a reputation. He gave Mano Ginobili a reputation. Hell, he gave Bruce Bowen a reputation because Tim Duncan was that good. You could have put Tim Duncan on any team in the NBA, and that team was going to be a finals contender. That's how great a basketball player that guy is. And in my opinion is the reason why he's my favorite. Where's Tim Duncan rate in the all-time greats? If he's not in your top 10, you're a fool. Five championships, three finals appearances, 
five championships out of six appearances. They lost one because Ray Allen had a lucky shot. Yeah. In fact, I think it's time for us to update the NBA's top ten list. Yeah, I got a little bit of time on my hands. Let's look into that, all right? We'll do that. But we're wrapping up the show. That's the Hall of Fame. That's the Hall of Fame class of 2020. Next year will be a whole new show. We'll see who made it. We'll see who doesn't. All right. Uh, congratulations to those guys. Hey, listen. I want everybody to stay outside. Stay safe. Wash your hands. Uh, we need this thing to go away. Uh, space is what matters. Unless you're with your loved one. Tim, that's a shout out to you. Uh, <laughs> We're going to catch you guys next week. Also, go look at the podcast. It's out right now. Downright Sports Radio, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and Google Play. And then check out this show, new show. Oh, check out our Instagram. Check out our Twitter. Check out our Facebook page. Yes, I'm doing it all, kids. Shout out to my man DJ Chase and what he's got going on. He's got a new beat mixtape getting ready to drop. And all his countless awards he's just receiving. He was uh, one of his uh, mixtape songs was number, rated number one out of 500. So shout out to DJ Chase out there. And thanks for Uncle Buddha for doing the music for this show. And we appreciate it. Uh, we're here at this uh, the, the, the we're secluded in our studios. But we'll be back and we'll reach out to you guys. Uh, become a friend and subscribe. That's what I'm talking about. Become a friend. Subscribe. Leave a comment. All right, buddy. Deuces.